Hello and welcome star citizens to the constellation ship guide. The constellation is a generalist ship. It can serve as your daily driver and is definitely viable for the late game. If you wonder what this chart is about, please check out my what ship to buy next video where I explain where I come from here. But now let's start with the constellation ship tour. Here you see my constellation Andromeda in the hangar. The Andromeda is the version focused on ship-to-ship -ship fighting, while the Constellation Tauros is the cargo variant, which is also the most flexible. So this is why in this video we will cover these two variants. The Andromeda has a shorter midsection, but she also has a cargo bay, so you can still use her for rock mining or for smaller cargo missions. When entering the ship you will notice that it's quite dark here, so first thing you need to do is go to the pilot seat and activate the engines. This will automatically switch on the lights. In the middle here behind the pilot seat you have access to the upper and lower weapon turret. For the Constellation Taurus, the lower turret features a tractor beam. When exiting one of the turrets, be patient and wait for the end of the animation. It happened to me that I tried to stand up earlier and dropped into the lower turret. You have two co-pilot seats and the pilot seat in the middle. Currently the co-pilot seats will not have too much to do, so if you go multi-crew just use one of the turrets. And we can be quite curious what the next overhaul of this ship brings with the next patch. One of the key features for the Andromeda is the ton of missiles it brings. Apart from this, standard equipment is four size 4 laser repeaters all on gimbals. You have four beds to log out and a let's say compact crew seating area with a table hidden in the ground which is not yet functionable. You have a space toilet and a couple of lockers as well. This is the cargo area which is, as I said before, a bit longer in the Constellation Taurus variant. In the sides we have airlocks and we can also see the missiles the ship comes with. In the rear we have access to a couple of components of the ship, as well as the snub fighter for the Andromeda. The Tauros will have additional cargo space here, which may be protected from scanning in the future. Let's start with the bounty hunting. I head over to Urkel to show you the configuration of my ships. First thing you will want to change is the quantum drive. The Bolon it comes with is one of the slowest variants that you will have. On the other hand you have plenty of quantum fuel on board. So you best equip a military variant. I usually go with the crossfield because it's most accessible. The stock shields are fine but if you want an improvement you can definitely go with the FR86 which is a 15% increase of hit points or the full block which is also a 10% increase in hit points. The weapons are a bit strange on the constellation. Two of the main weapon slots are fixed size 5, while the other two are gimbal size 5. Standard equipment are four size 4 laser repeaters. If I want to go ERT bounty hunting, I usually tend to equip ballistic gatlings size 5. For the matching ammo speed, I equip the other two with M6A laser cannons. So let's try VHRT bounties with the standard equipment laser repeaters. In the first mission I will take advantage of the huge missile load it comes with. This is the constellation Andromeda and I will fire a couple of salvos before engaging close combat. The softened up target will be no match even for the laser repeaters. Jesus. 
comparison, this is another VHR key mission. This time I will only use the laser repeaters and not use missiles at all. more than sufficient. I have switched to the Constellation Taurus, which is equipped with the Ballistic Gatling and Laser Cannon loadout. I will try some ERT missions now. The mission is completed, but my front shields are completely down. So what I will do in the next mission is increase power to the forward shields. You can do this pressing number 8 on the numpad. And finally I have found a hammerhead target. Note that there are only 900 rounds left in the Gatlings. is capable of doing ERTs. Let's check out the cargo hauling next. If you are interested in this game loop, please check out my trading guide number 2, where I show several runs with the Constellation Tauros. For this video I will only show you the best run currently, which is the RMC run from Rappel to Laurel. This run is risky and you need to invest a lot of Alpha UEC up front, but if you make it back to Laurel safely, you will have made a nice profit.
Profit for this run is more than 400,000 Alpha UEC. Let's summarize. Constellation is a size 4 ship with good durability and good firepower, but also with a bit strange weapon loadout. Especially the Taurus opens multiple game loops and can be your daily driver. You can do VHRT and ERT bounty hunting, you can do cargo hauling, where maybe you should focus on illegal runs or gold or RMC runs. Finally, let's speculate what the next patch 3.23 will bring. Currently, the constellation is in a really good state and is definitely late game viable. Maybe the weapons will be fixed with a complete overhaul and rework of all weapons. And while I hope that the constellation is still flyable solo, I think there will be certain benefits when going multi-crew, for example with repair gameplay or with the improvement of weapon turrets. And I'm quite curious what the flight characteristics will be after the patch. If you liked the video, please leave me a like and a comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot and see you in the verse.